Good morning or good afternoon, everyone. Today, for the 22nd episode of our Katia TV series, I am very pleased to welcome Paul McKean from the Katia team. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Anne. As Paul already talked about Power BI and other topics here, I'm sure that some of you will recognize him. Today, Paul will present how to remove digital discontinuities to achieve more connected engineering. As usual, feel free to ask questions by using the chat pane on your right. And um, we will publish all questions and answers in the CATIA user community with the webinar recording. This is where you can find answers, uh, watch previous webinars, and ask new questions if you want, and we will answer you. If you prefer an email response, you can also send us an email to katia.contact at freeds.com. I hand over to Paul now and wish you a very inspiring webinar. So today we're going to talk about our connected engineering approach. And this is an approach for companies who are already using Katia version 5. And we're going to discuss how we can add value to your Katia version 5 environment by both being able to make data more valuable and also grow in some of the engineering capabilities and possibilities. So in order to do that, um, I'm first going to introduce the concept of connected engineering. We'll talk about some of the top values and then I'll spend a little bit of time talking about the packaging and the offers that we've created to make this approach more attractive. So let's first of all think about the challenges in the mid-market and I'll just go through each one of these in turn and I'm sure these are things which resonate with many companies in the industry. Parts and assemblies are definitely becoming more and more complex. That's without a doubt true. And not only that, but the processes that are involved in actually realizing these smart or complex parts are in themselves becoming more complex. They're becoming more complex, not just in the process and the manufacturing requirements, but complex in terms of the ecosystems that come together to make them happen. There's an increased need for collaboration based on, of course, the right data. There's nothing worse than collaborating on the wrong data. It's a great way of creating scrap. And aesthetics are becoming much more important in the definition of products as a way of differentiating and making your product the one that customers want. Model-based definition is a tremendous efficiency approach which reduces cost and ensures that we can achieve, yes, a paperless product, but more importantly, we ensure that the product is correct is available and there's only one reality. We extend the usage of 3D as a reference beyond just mechanical design, making your data more valuable, giving access to your data from anywhere, at any device, at any time. And that brings in the opportunity of mobility because uh, we need instant communication across the globe, across all participants. So these are things that help bring to reality the new products that we need to create. Let's talk a little bit more about what stops that. And what stops that and makes it difficult is a, a concept called digital discontinuity. Digital discontinuity is where in moving from one participant in the value cycle to another, you create a translation and that translation brings risk, brings delay and brings uncertainty. And as we've said, products, processes, ecosystems are becoming more complex. And as they become more complex, the number of handovers from one participant to another increases exponentially. So that digital discontinuity, which has been something that people have been able to live with in the past, will become something that will cause failure in the more complex environments of the future. And this is a concept, therefore, that has growing interest in the industry. We see CA, SAE International, Airbus, the Manufacturer Magazine, and GE Aviation, among many companies and organizations and influencers who are talking and starting to recognize how important this concept is. So when we bring together our concept of connected engineering, who benefits? Well, the good answer is everyone. Uh, for a user, from your day-to-day -day life, a user removes the non-value-add activities that plague the lives of engineers. 
it gives him more time to innovate, more time to be an engineer because he's not translating data, he's not making copies for someone else, he's not checking whether he's got the right version. All of that stuff is done automatically, therefore he can focus on what he trained for, which is the innovation and engineering. For a manager in an engineering department, it means that he can manage more collaborative and innovative projects. He can meet his targets by bringing together the team, by ensuring the team can work seamlessly together and therefore get, get more done and get more done on time. And at an executive level within a company, by ensuring that full end-to-end -end multidisciplinary integration means that he's got faster products to market, better products to market, and the delays, the risks, the overruns don't happen. So let's think about some of the, the top values. And what we did was we talked to customers, our sales teams, our technical teams, our consultancy teams, talked to many customers in the mid-market, and what we found are recurring questions. They're saying, and we're paraphrasing here, when we ask them, do you have problems with task management and collaboration? They're saying they do. They need access to data from other formats, not just CATIA, although they may be using CATIA v5, but not necessarily for authoring either. Um, they need to improve the efficiency of certain key processes like uh, sheet metal uh, to ensure that they take into account springback, uh, sophisticated surfacing extensions when they're creating moulds and tooling. And something that recurs a lot is that 2D drawings cost a lot of money to produce. They're time consuming to produce. It requires a certain skill, it requires uh, an awful lot of time. And if, say, a 2D drawing costs $250 each to create, wouldn't it make sense to reduce the number that you create? More people need to access and share their 3D information with other people. And a lot of people are doing that, but what they're doing is copying that data. Once you copy data, they're creating a digital discontinuity and they're losing the link with the current version. And that brings its own challenges, obviously. And also at a, at a management of project information and data, do you have difficulty managing maturity? And when you make new versions or modifications, is that managed correctly and properly to ensure that everyone is aware and knows what they're working with? And there are, in the solutions that we've constructed, they directly address these challenges, these top six values as we call them. We have the ability now to review projects within a task management with instant collaboration. We're open, and in these packages that we'll talk about in a while, we see that we're open to multi-format 3D products. We have the ability, with some very sophisticated and industry-proven modeling functions, to address specifically industry processes in, in a particularly productive way with a lot of industry-proven and very uh, sort of high-function specialities. Uh, we have the ability to reduce paperwork by associating all the information that you need about the model in the 3D model, and this ensures that there's only one version. It ensures that everyone knows where to go, and it ensures that no matter whether you're the chief designer or the procurement officer, you know and can get the same information without having to have specialist drawings created. It's there and accessible, and it's accurate. You have the ability to access your V5 product from anywhere, on any device, at any time, on your phone, on your tablet. You don't need CATIA. You simply need access to the platform. And the ability to have the most secure data you've ever had by ensuring managed lifecycle and controlled access so that only the people you want to get access to the information. So connected engineering for us is really all about making sure your information is complete, it's available, and therefore it's usable for your business needs. And your information is usable if you can do a number of things. First, you need to be able to find it when you need it. Then you need to be able to open it in the way in which you need it, using the applications and tools that you need to do your job. You need to be able to understand what it is and from where. You need to trust that it is what it says it is. That's no minor thing. 
And you need to be able to work with it in the way that you need to. And two aspects of our solution really address those important values. One is that we've created a, a packaging of CATIA Engineering Excellence, which is combined with uh, PLM collaboration services on the cloud, which allows you to take your CATIA version 5 uh, design and continue your CATIA version 5 designs, but to store that information on the cloud and have it readily available to whoever you believe needs that data uh, as a single source of truth. Your investment in CATIA version 5 tools, processes, skills is preserved because you keep continuing to use CATIA version 5 uh, and you can then enhance that process by adding capability to it, not by removing it. So there's no need, there's no need to migrate. There's simply, you can augment your CATIA version 5 capability with some of the new things that we'll talk about in just a moment. And it would be pointless, of course, if there wasn't a, a journey, a route map. Um, it's not just a, a big bang. Uh, there's the opportunity to take advantage of these new capabilities at your own pace, as and when you need them, and as appropriate to your business and your time skills. So if you're starting today doing your structural design or whatever with CATIA version 5, uh, there's the opportunity to, if you like, to dip your toe in the, uh, the 3D experience platform by getting connected by, and we'll talk a little bit about that, where you can uh, share some of your information with other people on the cloud, on the 3D Experience platform. Next, there's the real uh, value where you connect your CATIA version 5 directly to the 3D Experience platform, allowing you to file and save all your data there and ensuring the single source of truth and accessibility. And that's what we call connected engineering. And we'll show you a video that shows some of the capabilities there. Once you're in that position, there's the opportunity then to look at some of the new 3D Experience CATIA capabilities that are only available in 3D Experience CATIA, uh, some capabilities which don't exist on CATIA version 5. And we call this a supplemental approach. It means that, for example, you can continue to design your structure in CATIA version 5, but take advantage of some amazing new 3D Experience electrical functionality and route your wire harness in CATIA 3D Experience. Or perhaps uh, you can uh, optimize a product that you've designed in CATIA version 5 on 3D Experience CATIA. Or you can take a, a part that you've designed and uh, create amazing visualization or experience it in virtual reality on CATIA, CATIA 3D Experience. A supplemental approach. And <coughs> ultimately, of course, then there's the opportunity to transform your environment completely to uh, CATIA 3D Experience. Now, I won't talk too much in detail on this. We call these phases, as I said, getting connected, getting ready, accelerating, and transforming. And for each of these four stages in the, in the journey, we're going to show you a particular video which will illustrate the, each one. Um, so let's start that process, and we'll so show you step one, getting connected, uh, to the 3D Experience platform and taking advantage of some of the initial capabilities. So if we could play the video. Cecile, CTO of Oscar Company found an interesting idea browsing the community of the company. She shares it with Carol. Carol saves useful content on her 3D drive, so she can kick off the project easily. She shares the sketches to the creative designer. Orion receives the notification and she visualizes the shared content. She directly opens CATIA V5 from the 3D Experience platform, creates the services and synchronizes on the cloud. She shares the CAD product with the two engineers of the company and contacts Alan. He visualizes the 3D model with 3D Play and starts working on the internal structure. Once finished, he shares his design with the electronic engineer. Roman is working on the battery of the drone. From CATIA V5 Roman access to 3D Compass and his drive. Then he shares his design from CATIA V5. 
Carroll, Allen and Roman review their design creation all together. They explore the design geometry and enjoy a playful experience. The drone design is ready to be printed. So that showed the, uh, the, the first stage as a, as, a, as a potential way of exploring some of the, the capabilities available in the platform. But let's look at the real essence of our uh, presentation today, which is getting ready with connected engineering. And here we're going to show uh, quite a detailed scenario. Uh, and it's a scenario where we will uh, create a modification to an existing version 5 drone using Katia version 5, but doing that in the context of the platform, which allows many other participants to share activities using the same data. So if we play the video. This connected engineering demonstration is designed to show how 3D Experience PLM collaboration services allow Katia v5 data to be stored on the 3D Experience platform and used collaboratively throughout the project by Katia v5 users and many others. The demonstration is built around a design change process that will involve multiple users, such as marketing, designers, managers, and procurement. So let's talk about the process we're going to illustrate in more detail. We'll show an eight-step process involving multiple roles. These people have different needs and skills. Step one, the market analyst wants to explain some requirements and share some ideas. Step 2, the CATIA v5 designer starts to work on the 3D data, respecting what the market analyst has explained. He begins with an existing design and shares this data with everyone. In step 3, the designer adds the camera and creates a new revision of the product. In step 4, a manager reviews the revision and creates the detailed design request. In step 5, a second CATIA v5 designer opens up the new project and creates the part to connect the camera to the original drone model and saves it inside the platform. In step 6 we go back to the first CATIA v5 designer. He modifies the body of the drone and adds a protective glass sphere to the design. In step 7 the manager reviews and validates the design work. And finally in step 8 another type of user in procurement needs to access the 3D design to create a cost analysis. So with that background, let's go through the process and show you how it works. We start with the market analyst, working with Microsoft Word, for example, editing an existing requirement and saving it on the 3D Experience platform. The data is saved in a collaborative environment where you can find types of data, documents and 3D data. This 3D dashboard is accessible on the web by many users and inside this environment we can share all the project data. As well as marketing specifications, he can share some sketches and ideas to indicate what is required. So moving on to step two, the CATIA v5 designer is going to take his existing file-based CATIA v5 drone design and save it in a collaborative space. This will make the project accessible to everyone anytime, anywhere, and on any device. So we see that we have a 3D Experience menu inside CATIA v5, so we can save this drone inside the 3D Experience platform. Having done that, the project is available to everyone through the dashboard. Using players and viewers, anyone can browse and view the product that has just been saved. This is web-based technology, allowing fully mobile access. In this viewer, for example, we have some basic functionalities such as sectioning, and we can take some measurements. Now in step three, the designer will create a new project by adding a camera to the existing drone. So in CATIA v5, he finds and opens the existing drone. And we can see the subassembly structure. And inside, he will add the new camera. He searches for the camera.
finds it. And with a single drag and drop, adds the new camera to the existing drone. So now the user creates a new revision, going from revision A to revision B. Now in step 4, the manager will conduct a mobile review of the new drone and communicate the required modifications to the team. Here he will use a specific application called Design Review. He creates a circle to identify the area of interest and adds text to explain the work required. To create a new glass sphere to protect the camera. To modify the drone structure and to add a support to connect the camera to the structure. So now in step 5, a new Katia V5 designer will carry out the job. The designer first opens the product and directly loads the data into V5. The designer sketches and creates a new part, a support to connect the camera to the structure. And in parallel, the design manager would like to add 3D tolerances on the adaptive support. He creates a collaborative task online by giving description, context, maturity, estimated date and attachments to the assignee. The designer receives the task to execute and he reopens his Katia V5. Here we are using 3D Master. We can create functional tolerancing and annotations directly on the 3D parts. So this definition is saved on the 3D Experience platform so it will be available to everyone. In parallel with this, in step 6, Designer 1 will create a modification of the drone body to create a sphere to protect the camera and save it in the 3D Experience platform. This step also requires a change in version of some parts of the drone body. And the system helps the user by prompting the user with an exclamation mark, asking the user what he wants to do, and the user creates the revision. So now the design is complete, and the manager will review and validate the project. The manager has access to the new data. First he checks that is the right revision and version. And then he will check in 3D that the design is consistent using the design review application. This is not simply a viewer, but annotations can be saved as slides with the product so the comments are persistent. They can even be versioned, so it's a great way to follow and track design discussions. So the manager checks the support, the new camera, and the structural modification. In the final step, a procurement user needs to access the 3D part to create a cost estimate. She searches for and finds the support. The geometry, the dimensions and the tolerancing information are all visible and available. She can check the quality required. She can also use filters to limit the display. And this can be done on any device such as a phone or a tablet. So you've seen an existing drone designed with Katia V5 modified to include an integrated camera. The key points were the collaboration of multiple users with different needs. And very importantly, collaboration is not about duplicating information, reinterpreting information. This is collaboration with connected engineering. Every participant used the same data, a single source of truth, whether it is the designer sitting at his desk or the manager connecting from his phone. And of course, doing this in the context of continuing to use and protecting your investment in Katia V5. 
So I think that, that was a great demo. I love it because there's not one copy made of data throughout that whole process. Everyone is using the same information, which is quite amazing. So there's no risk of getting out of sync. And it's a great example of how, again, using what you already do with Katia V5, you make your Katia V5 data more valuable than it has ever been. But once you've done that, uh, there's more opportunity because once your data is stored on the 3D Experience platform, you have the opportunity to explore that and work on that, not just with Katia version 5, but any of the apps and roles that are available on the 3D Experience platform, including Katia 3D Experience. And we're going to illustrate that um, with another demo. And this demo will show how a car seat design that has been constructed in Katia version 5 can be taken further by taking advantage of some of the new Katia 3D Experience electrical function to design the wire harness. So if we can play the video. In the following demonstration, we'll see how PLM Collaboration Services opens up the power of 3D Experience Platform for collaborative electrical systems development. We'll use the example of a car seat where the mechanical structure is designed in Katia V5 and the electrical harness is designed using 3D Experience Katia. We start with a Katia V5 user using the 3D Experience Platform where all the data is stored. We can select all the data visualize the data created in V5 and in 3D Experience. We can select V5 data and open a V5 session, just as we traditionally do, and from there continue to the mechanical design. Now we are in wire harness design using 3D Experience Katia. We select and build the session consisting of V5 data for mechanical and all the electrical data that is 3D Experience Katia, including the airbag equipment and all the connectors. We place a connector in the airbag unit. And we start routing the bundle from an existing bundle, which is at the bottom of the seat. We go through a support. Again, this support is 3D Experience Katia. The rest is V5 data, which we are using as a context through which to route our bundle. The bundle is more or less space reservation, guided by the surface. There is no direct link. It is simply used as a reference to create the shape of the bundle, just like we would do if using complete 3D Experience Katia. We connect to the end of the connector we just placed, and we can add a branch point here from the bundle just created to another connector for the grounding of this airbag unit. We can give it a little bit of over length to enable the easy connection or disconnection of the cable. And we're going to do the same at the top using local slack between the two red points. And we want an over length of two millimeters to make it easier to disconnect the cable. We have capabilities to check the harness to see if everything is connected, that all the connectors and all the bundles are connected using network analysis. If everything is green, as it is here, then all is connected. Again, these are all 3D experience electrical functionalities that help the designer create his harness much more easily than was the case in V5. The next step is to import the wires, the conductors coming from our own schematic systems or an external ECAD system. We can import them so we have them in our session. They are not yet routed through the bundle, but we have a from to check and we have a from to for every wire, as you can see here in blue. The next step is to route the conductors inside the bundles we've created to obtain the wire length and calculate the diameter of the bundles based on the number of wires inside and each wire diameter. We can analyze that using link review. In the highlighted section, we have two conductors and in the grounding of the airbag, we have only one. And you can see the diameter is different when we have more wires. Of course, we also have the length calculation because we know which wire is going through which bundle. We can analyze that here or we can create reports for the whole session. Now we see the role of the project leader who doesn't have access to Katia, just access to the platform. He can create his own dashboards to visualize or analyze data which is on the system. 
and I can just drag and drop the combination of V5 and 3D experience data into a 3D play session. Here he can visualize and check, highlighting the just created geometry, and better understand the status of the current design without having to access Katia, either V5 or 3D experience. That concludes this short demo. We've seen how 3D Experience Electrical provides a first-class user experience, which improves quality and reduces design time. This collaborative electrical systems development platform brings together all stakeholders. We've also seen how existing Gatia V5 processes can continue to be used, but the value of V5 data is extended by making it available to all. And we've seen how powerful new functionalities can supplement existing processes with 3D Experience Katia. So that was an example, and just an example, of how once your data is in the 3D Experience platform, you can start to take advantage of some of the huge portfolio of roles and apps that exist on the 3D Experience platform. Not just Katia, but other brands, Simulia, Delmia, and all of the other brands where you can use that data, that V5 data, on an ongoing basis and basically add value to your process and extend your process. So the next stage then is to look at, uh, if you like, the, the, kind of the fourth uh, step in the journey, which is bringing all of your engineering process onto the 3D Experience platform with 3D Experience Katia. Um, Turn down your speakers, perhaps, here, if you're in a, in a quiet room, because uh, we've got a little musical example of uh, what you can do with a fully integrated process on the Katia 3D Experience platform with Katia Multidiscipline Engineering. So if we can play that video, please. Okay, so that concludes our quick view through the, uh, the capabilities that are introduced uh, along the journey. Um, so depending on your interest now, we've either come to the interesting part of the presentation or the boring part of the presentation, because I'm going to talk about how we've created some packages that can make these capabilities reality. So at an overview level, if you're a Katia version 5 user today, uh, you've seen our four steps, get connected, get ready, accelerate and transform and that we have, particularly in the Get Connected uh, component, uh, we have the ability to, sorry, Get Ready component, the ability to have three scaled packages which deliver increasing richness of functionality. You choose which one of those suits uh, your needs, combined with uh, the ability to connect directly to the cloud. So this is what uh, connected engineering is all about. It's about selecting one of those packages and bringing that to the cloud for your data with uh, the, the, right, the, the right connection. So let's see how, what that means. Uh, what is it? 
what's the value of it again some functions and I won't go into the detail but it brings functions such as step to every package uh, it brings specialized sheet metal function uh, it provides the ability to uh, apply a strategy of 3D master by putting all of your product related information into the 3D it delivers kinematic capabilities which allow you to simulate and analyze the, the mechanisms within your products so essentially connected engineering You've got your Katia V5 apps. You've got new benefits which combine on two axes, essentially. One on the performance axis because of the increased and extended functionality that you've seen. And the other, by storing your information on the cloud, you have the digital continuity, which ensures that your project is shared as a single source to every participant through the 3D Experience platform. So the overall summary and uh, again, this may be too much for you, uh, or it may be something that you want to just pause and have as a reference. Uh, we start with Katia V5 customers with their existing uh, configurations. You have the ability to dip your toe and explore with Get Connected uh, and using Collaborative Business Innovator. But you have the ability to get ready by taking your Katia V5 new packages and connecting them to the cloud so you can store your data on the cloud, giving you the opportunity to accelerate through supplemental use of 3D Experience CATIA new capabilities which may not be available on CATIA v5. And ultimately, the opportunity at a time and place of your choosing to transform and take and experience the full 3D Experience platform adoption. So now let's look at some of the summaries of the benefits we've talked about in the course of today. Uh, the first, the ability to access my product from any location, at any time, on any device, and often without having a Katia license, either V5 or 3D experience. The ability to associate much, if not all, of the product information in 3D, which reduces or eliminates even the number of 2D drawings that you need to create. You can certainly take associative 2D views for illustration, but you don't need to go through the period of generating and the expense of generating the 2D drawings. Um, some of the power of these packages, the very sort of sophisticated, industrially proven capabilities uh, to really increase the productivity of your industrial processes. So some very, you're getting in these packages some very, very sophisticated 3D modeling capabilities. Um, your data can be more secure than it ever has been. Uh, you have the ability to, without buying a, a separate PDM application or something like that, you have the ability to secure your data, manage it the way you want to, and control access to it so that only the people you want to can see it, and they can only see the bits that you want them to see. But we're not a bubble. We need to talk to the world. We need to be able to talk using uh, compliant standards, and therefore we have included in the package the openness to access multi-format 3D products. And finally, the ability to review projects with the ability to have as we saw in the demonstrations, to manage tasks. Um, again, without having a CATIA V5 license, the ability for a manager to get access to that information and the ability to have instant collaboration with any of the participants in the engineering process. So I hope you've enjoyed our little uh, journey into connected engineering and I'll invite you back with Anne for the conclusion. Well, thank you very much, Paul, for this uh, very clear presentation. Now, we have, uh, uh, I have a few questions for you. Okay. And um, here is the first one. Let's say that I've been using V5 for many years and my users are already very efficient. What benefit can I expect with your proposal? Okay, that's, that's a good question. And I guess the, the first thing to think about is that this whole approach, the connected engineering approach, has been explicitly designed for people just like that. 
it's been designed for people who are using Katia V5 and are saying, hey, my Katia V5 is good. I want to keep using my Katia V5. So the whole point is to say you can continue that to use V5, but you have the opportunity then to make that information more valuable because you can share it. People can share it and access it with confidence without requiring Katia V5 licenses. You can collaborate more easily because the, all of the participants can look at and be confident they're looking at the same data. Mm -hmm. And as I said before, the advantage of being able to, because a lot of V5 customers will come to me and they'll say, I'd love to use some of this new Katia 3D experience capability, but we're a V5. So this, for the first time, gives you the opportunity to keep your V5 and then take advantage of 3D Experience Katia just to see what it can do for you. So I think that's really very much the advantage. There, there, are, no, there are no downsides. It's all just opportunity to do more. Great. Okay. A second question. Should I convert all my V5 models to be able to store and work with them in 3D Experience? Absolutely not. Stop and don't do that. Okay. You don't need to do that. What you need to do is use your existing 3D models, make them available in the 3D Experience platform, continue to evolve them, continue to, to develop them. Once they're stored on the platform, you can access them with Katia V5, you can access them with the 3D Experience, and you can share them with, with everyone. Now, let's say that I'm doing mechanical design only, and uh, I don't need uh, other engineering capabilities. So, what should I do? Um, well, you, if we always stayed where we are, we would never move on or make progress or be more efficient. And I think our mechanical products even today are getting more complex. And who doesn't want to be able to do things faster? Who doesn't want to be able to do things uh, uh, with fewer people? Who doesn't want to be able to innovate the most? So. This new capability, just because you're just doing mechanical design, does not mean you can't benefit. What about the optimization capability of GDE, for example? You're not mm. going to get that mm. in the world. So that means that you use some of these tools, for example, to make your products lighter or, or, or stiffer or stronger. And basically, you end up with better products as a result. That's what this is all about. Sure. I understand. Then. Um you know, my engineering practices have been optimized through years of V5 usage. I'm already very efficient. Absolutely. Well, we understand that. And I know that if you've been developing methodologies for years on Katia V5, you're going to be pretty slick. You're going to be, your, your processes are common, your approaches to it are common, you may have templates. So we understand that efficiency and that efficiency rightly means people need to think very carefully about making any changes to that. That's why with this approach, you keep all that. You don't compromise any of it. You keep it all. You simply add new capabilities which can improve your process. Okay, it sounds interesting, but I'm a small company. My budget is limited. I cannot afford 3D experience as a second infrastructure in addition to V5. The, the, this is something that people uh, have often thought about in terms of moving forward. Can I afford the infrastructure? Can I afford the, the, the hardware? Do I have the right technical support to mm. keep it going? And this is what cloud is all about because cloud gives you that as part of the offering. It means that you can be a one-man band and you have the power of the Dassault Systems IT infrastructure supporting you, backing your information up, keeping it running. Cloud is an amazing way for small companies to get the same sophistication that the OEMs are, are developing, but to get that for a fraction of the price with simplicity. Okay, well, thank you very much, Paul, for these very convincing answers. And thank you all for attending, especially those who ask questions. I, again, if you didn't have time to ask your question, you can still ask it in the Katia user community. 
you will see the link in a few seconds. And this is where you will find answers and you can <coughs> watch previous webinars if you want. Well, talk to you at the next webinar. And bye for now. Yeah, bye for now. <laughs>